It certainly is not looking rosy, and we're right now going to talk about Ukraine. And our guest is Andriy Osarchuk, Ukrainian MP. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for having me here. So what is your take on that business report that David Kennedy just, just um, showed us? Russia's economic growth forecast 3.6% 2023, 3.2% 2024, higher than U.S.'s and some European countries. What's your take on that? Uh, I generally agree with uh, the conclusions which uh, your presenter uh, just made. Uh, but in a short, um, I think the efforts uh, uh, done till today by uh, Western communities, by Western countries on sanctioning Russia uh, was huge. Uh, and definitely we expect uh, much more uh, results uh, from all these actions. If you remember all discussions in the middle of 2022 till the end of 2022, everyone was expected the dramatic fell down of, of Russian economy. But it's true that they were able to adapt it to this uh, new economical realities for them. And the only reason why, why they succeed is uh, mostly because uh, the sanctions are good, but they're not really properly controlled. Uh, unfortunately, neither European Union nor United States was able to establish a robust, uh, efficient sanction control mechanism. So that's why all this, for example, price ceiling for oil uh, on $60 uh, never properly worked. And uh, there are a lot of uh, other uh, examples when uh, Russia was able to bypass sanctions and, in fact, was able to receive everything which was needed for Russian Federation during all these years, including chips, which they use for military and for missiles, and uh, a lot of electronics, which again is inside the Russian missiles, and so on and so forth. So that's why the biggest task for the West is to improve sanction control. Exactly. Absolutely. They're good at evading them, right? Ah, that's yeah. The problem. Masters of it. Now, talking about uh, missiles, uh, well, we are hearing uh, about that from President Zelensky on a daily basis. The situation is looking bad, and without a major support from the U.S., uh, it's not going to work in, in Ukraine. And, and lately, we, we also learned that it um, may actually come to an end in uh, 2024. Do you, do you agree with these assumptions? Look, uh, we pay very high price for uh, delays uh, with providing Ukraine a military support, which was promised. So it's not just something abstract, but uh, we all remember that uh, our friend Joe Biden was saying that we will stand with Ukraine as long as it takes. Uh, but it happens that for the last almost five months, uh, we don't receive proper support uh, from the United States, or sorry, not proper, no support from the United States. And the price for that is, uh, is huge. Because uh, I think yesterday Zelensky confirmed that uh, for, for the last several weeks, we lost uh, a lot of energy generation in Ukraine, especially one big energy plant, which is just 50 kilometers from Kiev in Ukrainka. Uh, we lost simply because we don't have enough uh, missiles for our air defense. Uh, the same is happening in uh, other big cities like we had permanent attacks on Kharkiv. Uh, today morning it was absolutely bloody attack on Chernigiv, which is also the city which is very close to Kyiv. It's like one hour drive from Kyiv. And based on latest reports, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 15 people has been killed. More than 50 were injured. Uh, and uh, the video which I saw, it's absolutely dramatic. So all that is the price for delays, which is definitely linked to uh, internal political issues. We, we respect that the United States has an uh, election campaign. Uh, but finally, uh, there is some optimism with this, because based on my knowledge, what I have uh, received from my channels in Washington and from my colleagues in Kyiv, it is very likely that uh, this uh, long saga with Ukrainian support from Congress uh, supposed to be finished this Saturday. At least at the moment when I'm talking to you, the Speaker Johnson announced uh, his readiness to put on voting uh, four separate bills for Israel, for uh, Ukraine, uh, for Taiwan, and the fourth one, I think it's a pro prohibition of TikTok or something like that. So they always like some, uh, some strange political moves, but still, 
Uh, we expect that this decision will be made. Uh, unfortunately, it looks that additional voting in Senate will be needed. So uh, meaning that we will lose probably another week. But hopefully till the end of April, beginning of May, this issue shall be finally closed and the American support shall come again to Ukraine. So you're uh, saying... Finish... There's, there's, you know, something I, I... Well, I hope everything goes well. But as you said, no. there will be separate votes and, uh, you know, to, to, to help Israel, to help Taiwan, to help Ukraine and to, to ban TikTok or whatever. Now, don't, don't you think that there's a threat that actually Taiwan may receive its help along with Israel and there will be ban on TikTok, but you will be left out in the cold again, given the, uh, given the current political um, landscape in the US? Well, uh, let me add to that, because actually, yeah, because this is, it's concerning. I mean, I would think for Ukraine that these bills are um, disconnected from each other instead of voting on one, which for sure they will vote on helping Israel. So how is this um, a good news for, for Ukraine? Oh, definitely. I didn't say that everything goes well. Everything mm -hmm. goes very badly. Because, again, we expect to receive this decision in uh, last November. Uh, today we are talking to you, I'm talking to you in the middle of April. So that's why everything uh, goes uh, extremely wrong. And uh, unfortunately, we are the hostages of uh, the political fight in the United States. And you are absolutely right. The separation of the bill on the four separate bills create a risk. And uh, I'm sure that this risk exists. And uh, after everything what had been happening in D.C., I would not be surprised on anything. But uh, at least uh, there is a clear path uh, for the voting, uh, which was um, absolutely impossible one or two months ago. So uh, based on all, all information which I have, this voting will happen on uh, Friday, Saturday this week. So that's why uh, I confirm that the risk exists. But I think uh, as Johnson, as Republicans and Democrats, they all, I think, understand the risk for United States, the risk for reputation of the United States, the risk for national security of the United States if Ukraine will collapse. And I just repeat the words of Vladimir Zelensky. He said, I think two days ago, that without American support, it's impossible to win this war. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know that Israel is also... Well, in, in, in difficult situation, not, not, I guess not as dire as Ukraine, I will say that. However, but mm -hmm. Israel is also not a in, in NATO member, just like Ukraine is not a NATO member. Yet U.S. and other European allies directly help um, Israel to shut down missiles and drones, yet they're afraid to help um, Israel in that matter. How, how does um, President Zelensky and you as an MP interpret that? I think everything was uh, properly, correctly said by uh, British uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. He was very open, saying that uh, it's much easier for the West uh, to help Israel fighting in the sky of Israel against uh, Iranian drones and Iranian missiles. But the same Iranian drones and the same missiles in the Ukrainian sky is uh, too risky for uh, for the Western countries because they're simply afraid to uh, having any interaction with Russian troops. So unfortunately, uh, the, the West, uh, the European Union, uh, they, they're still afraid of Russia. We are fighting with them and uh, people in the Europe, they're still afraid. So that's the answer. Right. Andrei, one last question, because, you know, war in Ukraine is also a race against time. And um, now that we have this new mobilization bill, uh, I'm wondering, given the, um, the, uh, the amount of time it takes for soldiers to get properly trained, will they make any, uh, any impact on, uh, on the battlefield? Because uh, according to this new law, it, it, it will take up to five months, right? Uh, let me be very clear. It's not a new law. It's amendments to existing legislation. Unfortunately, there were a lot of wrong interpretations, like the Ukrainian parliament is working on the new law on mobilization, which is wrong. We just amend existing uh, legislation, which exists, which works, which help us uh, to mobilize uh, the soldiers to army for the last 10 years, since the beginning of the war. Uh, for today, we just change uh, the rules a little bit. 
Uh, we decrease the uh, age limit. So now uh, it's decreased from 27 to 25 years. And uh, yes, uh, it will give uh, um, a chance for the military to receive uh, more, um, let's say, better quality uh, soldiers, uh, better trained soldiers. Uh, definitely it will not uh, uh, have a reflection on the army in the next uh, week or month. But I think in uh, three or four months, uh, we will see uh, the, the changes in dynamics of uh, mobilization in Ukraine, and not only in dynamics, because this law is also about providing additional guarantees and additional motivation to, to Ukraine.